Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross video on combining a linear and a quadratic inequality. And this is basically the culmination, the end of all the stuff you've been learning on quadratic inequality. So this is quite hard. Let's read the question. n is an integer, that's a whole number, such that 7n plus 6 is greater equal to 20 and 5n over n squared plus 4 is greater equal to 1. Find all the possible values of n. Now what we need to do first is to solve each of these two inequalities. This thing here is known as a linear inequality. And the reason it's linear is, well, partly because there's no squared term, but more simply it's where you have only n terms or x terms and constant terms. So we've got a constant term, there's no variable, constant term, no variable, or an n term or an x term or whatever. So that's linear. And this is a quadratic inequality because you've got an n squared term. So this is a quadratic inequality. Well, it will be once we manipulate it a bit. And we have techniques for solving each of these kind of things. So let's solve the first one. So the 7n plus the 6 is greater equals 20. We're going to solve that first. Now, how do we do it? We just need to get the n on its own on one side of the inequality. So the n is being multiplied by 7, we're then adding 6, so let's undo that. We want to undo the add 6 first, we're going to subtract 6 from both sides to give us 7n is greater or equal to 14. And then we want to get rid of the times by 7, n is being multiplied by 7, so we divide both sides by 7. So that just becomes n, and it's greater or equal to 14 divided by 7 is 2. So we've solved the linear inequality, we know that n is any integer that's greater or equal to 2. So it could be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Let's next solve this quadratic inequality. So we're going to solve this. We've got 5n over n squared plus 4 is greater or equal to 1. Now we don't like this fraction here and in general we would multiply both sides through by the denominator of the fraction. Now we explored this kind of question in a previous video and basically we are allowed to multiply through the n squared plus 4 here because we can guarantee that it's positive. Anything squared is positive, plus 4 is still positive. The reason we have to be careful is because if you were to multiply through by something negative it would actually change the direction of that inequality. But because we can guarantee that this is positive we can safely multiply both sides by n squared plus 4 without worrying about changing the direction of that inequality. So I explained that in more detail in one of my previous videos. So then if we times the left by n squared plus 4 it gets rid of it leaving just 5n and it's greater or equal to times that by n squared plus 4 we get that. And then the next step is to get zero on one side of the inequality. Now, we want to leave the n square where it is because it's already positive. If we move the n square to the left, it would become negative, which makes it harder. So I'm just going to subtract 5n from both sides. Subtract 5n. That then becomes zero is greater or equal to, and then we're going to subtract 5n from this. So n squared, we want the n squared term first, then the n term, and then the constant term, the, the number term. So now we've got this inequality. Um, let's just write it the other way around because we like the n squared to be on the left. So we've got n squared minus 5n plus 4 is less than or equal to 0. So I'm just writing this the other way around. Um, I've effectively uh, mirrored it and that greater or equal to is becoming less than or equal to. What's the next step? We would then factorise this. So if I factorise this very quickly, that's going to be n minus 4, n minus 1. And then we'd sketch it. And again, if you haven't covered like quadratic inequalities, I hope you didn't skip straight to this subskill. You should be watching those videos first. So the roots are one and four. Remember, you just negate those numbers, positive four, positive one. And then it's a smiley face shape because it's a positive quadratic. And then we're saying, well, if y is equal to n minus four, n minus one, that's what we just sketched. We're saying that the y value here is less or equal to zero. Where on the graph is the y value less or equal to zero? Well, it's this part of the graph, isn't it? The y value is negative there. So we can say that n is between 1 and 4. So that's the solution to this second, this quadratic inequality here. And now we have to combine these two solutions together. We worked out that n is any number that's greater or equal to 2. But n is also between 1 and 4. 
And we're told it's an integer, it's a whole number. So how do we combine those together? Well, let's just use our common sense. n is any number greater or equal to 2. So let's start with 2. 2 is greater or equal to 2. Is 2 between 1 and 4? Yes, it is. So we've got 2. Let's consider the next number. n is any number greater or equal to 2. Well, the next number after 2 is 3. 3 is greater or equal to 2. Is 3 between 1 and 4? Yes, it is. And finally, what about 4? 4 is greater or equal to 2. Is it between 1 and 4, including 4, because less or equal to 4? Yes, it is. And then we can see that's going to be the end of our solutions. 5 is greater or equal to 2, but 5 is not between 1 and 4. So those are the final solutions, these integers here.